Uh, another thing people were afraid of, well, if you, you sound like you're trying to build a big pyramid structure of building all this stuff for everybody and I won't get a priority and my stuff won't look like I want it to look. Hmm. Autonomy. Big challenge here, but easy to do in this environment. Gerald Dunwoody set the branding strategy, the structure of how it's going to look. Our technical team did a very great job of making sure that things were technically configured. And guess what? We trained our content managers. You're the owner. You're the owner. You're the one responsible for authenticating the data that puts out there, making sure you put the business rules behind that document. The metadata is there to understand what's in there, what version it is, who has control on it, who owns that document, okay? Then you get to build your look and feel other than the branding strategy, how you want it to. What's important to your G staff? What's important to your organization? What's important to your directory, your division, or even your team, or even a collaborative environment? That autonomy can happen with the SharePoint that we build. What does that provide you? Even though you still can expose it to the world at the very lowest level, it still makes what your team needs without drill down, you don't have to drill down, you go straight to your team page. That's what you need to do for your everyday business. I may not want to go to the top page every time. I may not want to see the, what the director's going on. It's what's in it for me today, right? Right? So we had to be able to do that. Team did a great job of doing that. Great training out there to, to not leave the content managers out there by themselves. Gave them great guidance on how to set their documents, their parameters, their workflows, so that they became the same robust level at the team level, division, director, whatever level they were at, that they needed it to happen. Okay? Next chart. Um, a little bit about what makes, makes us unique, and we hope that it doesn't stay that way. We see a lot of people growing this way. I will tell you that um, part of our solution set, we partner with ASC. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Martin, uh, especially with regard to SIPR. He already built a SIPR. So guess what this also did? From a KM perspective, just because I didn't build it doesn't mean there's not a good solution out there. He provided my SIPR instance and we leveraged that. I didn't have to recreate. We partnered with him to provide a SIPR instance of our portal. Wow. We need to do that more. We need to do that more. I didn't, didn't have to repay for it, repackage it, and guess what? He's got the code on his portal for any of the other attributes that we may want to do, the capabilities that he's done. We share code back and forth. Wow, knowledge management in action, even with technology. Don't board it, share it. We don't have to repeat it, and we are all together bigger and better as a Together organization, whether it's the same service, say ASC community, or even at the DOD level. So autonomy, I've talked about a little bit about service reliability. Um, earlier someone said that they were available 96 to 98 percent of the time. Ricky, where they ask about us, 99.9? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Doesn't sound like a lot of difference, still A in school, not so in the IT uh, community. Now picture this. Everybody's on board the portal. You got everything out there. The first time you can't get there, it's not reliable. It will make the front page. So we have had to really work at the platforms, look at the RAM, look at all the um, storage capacity, and, and work with this and other platform agencies to say, what's it going to take? Once we get people on, you can't not have it available. Can't do it. You got now you're dependent on a technical solution. Now you've you've adopted the KM principles and you've populated it out to your community, you must continue to make it available. And that's not a get it there and stop. Our team is at least a generation ahead of what we're doing now, what we've deployed, or else we won't be, we will not have an opportunity, not only sustain, but continue to improve as technology does. It's changing at the speed of light. Your business is changing at that speed, and we need to be adaptable in that environment. And they've done a great job in doing so. Next chart. Um, I'm not going to go real deep into this unless you really want to talk about the technicals. So Eric's going to get up here and talk about some of the technical challenges that we have. But again, service reliability based on a standard architecture, just like document um, it would, back in records management days. And by the way, we still have records management even though it's mostly digital. 
Another KM challenge is, you know, how to do that in a consistent methodology across the board. Guess what? Eric's going to talk to you about something that DISA and the Army have come together on, on a way to do records management digitally. Doesn't mean just put it in my documents under PowerPoint or not or anything else. Because guess what? Who knows it's there? Even on a server, who knows it's there? Nobody. Who can discover it? Not a lot of people outside your own shared uh, server community. So a way to do a structure and the architecture to make sure that can happen with that service tool set is very important. It can't enable KM if we don't do this right. So Eric's going to spend some time talking to you about that. Next chart. And again, I talked about autonomy. And if you will, uh, Tim Raines, I don't know if it was his idea or the team gave it to him, but anyway, it's a very good analogy. When we talk about autonomy, think about a condo. Outside all looks the same. What we're trying to provide you here is, yes, we're all part of the condo. But when you go inside the apartment, somebody may have, you know, purple, red, or whatever they want inside. It doesn't matter. So long as it's built to standard, built to code, and discoverable to those who need to see it, those who need a key have a key. Those that don't, don't. That's the architecture and technical piece behind it. It's the KM that brings the business rules to bear that decide who and what needs to have that open. Okay? The power of the two is what we're talking about here. One cannot exist without the other. Next try. And system integrity. This has been um, a challenge not only as we deploy a robust co configuration, but also just a trust. I mean, it's just like anything. You, if you find out one or two bad things very early on, you get discouraged, okay? So, so we've had our bumps and bruises, but what we've done from a configuration uh, perspective is provided um, enough integrity over time and maturity from the time we went from 2007 to October when we decided we needed to migrate to version 2010 and move to DISA at the same time that this was going to be a challenge for us. But because we did it the baseline correct and we didn't move out before we knew how to re-baseline in the new environment, it, even as the bumps and bruises that we had were significantly reduced because the team took their time, worked with the user community, and made sure that they were aware and involved and stepped up to, here's the big thing that happened. Technically, we can migrate it and tell you technically if it made it. What really matters is when the content managers went back through their information and found out, is it the right version? Did everything go correctly? Is everything still up to date like I left it? Do my workflow still work? Does InfoPath still work? Do all my third party capabilities still work in the new environment? Okay. Technically, they look great to us, right? We need the functional community from a KM perspective to maintain that partnership so you can always validate that you have the right integrity and accuracy of the data and the content on your site. Okay? That's a challenge. Next chart. Enhanced user experience. This is probably one of my favorite areas. Um, when you go to a, a web page or you go to somebody's um, area of interest or collaboration site, it's almost overwhelming. It's so busy in color, dynamics, and video. I mean, you want to put the greatest whiz bang sexy thing out there, right? Because you want everybody to come to your side. We, the, the opposite end of that is, will they? Because it's almost overwhelming. You can't find anything and that kind of thing. What the team has done with the mature team that we have is, is they have gone back to that landscape and looked at what's really important. Work with the functional community and make sure it was accessible, very easily seen, and wasn't too overwhelming. On our front page, and you're going to see it at a demonstration later on, is everything's tab-oriented, and they maximize the environment and the landscape without losing the integrity and the ability to find things. You'd be surprised. I tried to count what I was on our front page of, of the commanding general. And when you look at it, it looks kind of plain. It doesn't look. It looks like a four-star command. I'm playing that way, but it doesn't overwhelm you. It doesn't, you know, scare you off with too much color, too much... But the things that are on the front and the information is overwhelming. I can't count it. I can't count it. So this is very important because this will make your users either come or not come and continue to use your site 
And that's the power of knowledge management. If they're not using the same tool set and you begin to diverse, then, then that's where you're going to lose the opportunity to integrate the knowledge management, not just at the lower level, but at every level. Not just at AMC, but across the Army. Not just in the Army, but at the joint level. And that's the power of making your information discoverable and the, the integrity of the configuration, the technical solution, and knowledge management overall. Uh, you will find that making things visible is not always a good thing to all people either. So don't be shocked. When people start seeing it all at once, that's a culture change. People aren't used to seeing their reports at a higher level before they've had time to <clears throat> change them or reveal them, right? Right? You have protection to do that. You have protection to do that. But as much as you can, the speed of the decision, the way the op tempo is going, they need to get that information quickly and accurately, the right time, the right place, to the right person. Again, enhance user experience. This is probably the power of the tool set and the uh, ability of KM to reach out there and be successful. Next chart. I believe I've hit most of that. Uh, I will tell you that there are several collaborative sites. Um, we, we do it for Commander's Conference, and when they said, oh, this is easy, my test of easy is, can Jesse do it? And guess what? I did it. I let everybody in the Commander's Conference. I was responsible for it because I wanted to look and feel and see myself. What does it take to do this? The technologies behind the scene that had it, they've had commander sites up like in 15 to 20 minutes, including the previous, out of the archives, what happened in the last commander's conference. Because guess what? People will say, what was brief last? What did so-and-so say? Who was there? Well, did we have any special, you know, things? And the historical office got it. SGS has had it. But it's not in a shared community environment. They would want to send it normally out by email. So what we've been able to do is maintain the integrity of the history of that data. So each time they have a conference, we bring the old site up and so you can see what was done before. They don't have to repeat if there was uh, centrally uh, registration information, exactly the same. Wow, how powerful can that be? Instead of it become in a three ring binder, which I have shelves and shelves of steel, I'm still working on that. Three ring binders and you gotta go back and look. Yeah, I can find it. Do I like it? No. Can I find the digitized version of it? Probably not. Do I have to retype it? Probably. Probably. Okay. I think those of you who know General Stevens, and he's probably the only one I know that can go back like ten jobs and find he would find it. I can't do that. Okay, can't do it. So another another opportunity to maintain archival information, bring it to bear, and not just see it but use it. Next chart. Third party tools. Eric, I'm going to leave this one to you. Let's tell about some of the capabilities here. Because the, the real interest here is going to be in the examples that I tell you functionally how we deployed some of this. But the, the, the thing is, like for everybody knows what RSSV is, right? Well, the team has stepped up based on the chief of staff's requirement for this. Imagine this. Instead of having to drill down to every directorate, on our front page, and you'll see it, we have everybody's events or special interest items. What's going on in the G1, the G2, G4? It pops up just like an RSS feed. You don't have to go to the G site. It's on the front page. If you want to read more, then you can drill down into it. But then you know what the highlights are. Just like watching CNN and Fox having it run across your screen. You know from every G staff what are the important things going on. Wow, what a KM initiative. Okay. Started with a requirement from the chief of staff. Second was understanding what that was and what was important. The business rules behind defining what important was and what should be exposed to the command. And the third part was the technical enablement that made KM happen for that information area. Next chart. Uh, these are a couple of our business solutions that, that we did. Uh, again, just like the RSSV, we have a master events calendar you can see so that we don't have cross G staffs trying to schedule main, major senior leader events at the same time. It's not that we don't talk to each other, but the speed of hanging up that phone, click, means something else has been scheduled properly. Right down the master events calendar, everything's posted there and you can see it. It, it is updated on a continuous basis, so we don't have as much of that overlap. Do we have none? 
Now we ain't got there yet. I'm not sure anybody could as fast as things change. But at least everybody has the same picture at the same time. 